<laughs> yes. All right, cool. So um, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? I think most people already know who I am at this point. Yes. So my name is Robert uh, Strand. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to pronounce it in English or, or Norwegian. <laughs> Again, it's, it doesn't make sense in English, though. So. Uh, I'm the head of platform engineering at Crayon Group. Uh, and uh, I, will, I wanted to jump on this one because uh, I'm... I, um, among other things, I'm uh, a, a HashiCorp ambassador, and I work a lot with Terraform. Uh, and uh, Crayon is going to use some of these technologies, let's just say. And also, I'm going to be talking tomorrow about you know, that in particular. So, you know, come back tomorrow, and I'll talk <laughs> more about Crayon and what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm, I'm Priyanka Ravi. I'm a developer experience engineer at WeaveWorks. I've been kind of around all day, so... <laughs> all right so we are actually talking about the new terraform controller that um is out there that you can use with flux and um it doesn't actually like i just wanted to make a note here so that's why i included these links it doesn't actually live under the um flux github it's actually under the weaveworks github so if you're looking for it this is where you'll find it so please go check it out and let us know what you think um we can go to the next slide so I'm going to briefly talk about what it is, what the benefits are, and then Robert's actually going to show us more of like a use case and, and stuff that he's been playing around with. So what is it? It's very much what it sounds like it is. It's a Flux controller that can manage your Terraform resources, and um, it's actually not limited to just Kubernetes resources. Whatever you can Terraform, it can um, take care of that for you. So uh it has several features the most exciting like not, the most recent exciting feature is that it integrates now with terraform cloud and terraform enterprise so we're very excited about that um and then you can actually set it up to do manual approvals or auto approve i think robert's going to show us an example of that as well and you can actually get the um outputs if you're familiar with terraform you can get the terraform outputs to actually input or output into a kubernetes secret which is pretty exciting and then there is a cli called the TFCTL CLI, and you can install it if you go to the um, GitHub for the Terraform controller under the Weaveworks GitHub. You can actually install it as a binary and um, play with it there. And uh, like I said, it does exactly what you expect the Terraform controller to do. It applies your Terraform, manages your Terraform. Um, and then let's go to the next slide. So uh, the benefits are Really, you know, I heard a lot about this even at KubeCon being in person. Like a lot of people were really excited about this controller. This is something that's really been asked for a lot. Um, yeah, lots of community excitement about this one. And so there is full GitOps automation with using the Terraform controller. You can use it to GitOps your existing Terraform resources and um, take advantage of the GitOps model for planning a manual, manually applying Terraform as well. There's drift detection for Terraform resources, and it's basically used as the glue for Terraform resources and Kubernetes workloads as well. And now uh, Robert's actually going to take it away and show us a little demo and explain some more to us. I think you're also going to show us the, the guide as well, right? Yeah, I, okay. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll walk slowly through stuff quickly. <laughs> or something to that effect <laughs> uh, and hopefully hopefully everything works uh, because <laughs> I've had a lot of issues with my computer today so I'm just like, like hoping that the demo gods uh, you know uh, you know aren't working against oh me. yeah I hate live demos so I get it <laughs> yeah so uh, I wanted to do more than what I'm showing here uh, but I kind of had to limit myself to like just showing off some of the features so uh, first of all uh, I hope the screen like the, the font size is big enough on this um, literally what's going on here is that I have a git repository and I've set up flux against it that's why you see the flux system uh, folder uh, I have two main folders, if you ignore all the other things that I've been trying to get to work. Uh, I have two main folders, one called just manifest, which is the place where my manifests live. And I have one called Terraform, where my Terraform uh, modules are. Um, I have one very simple, uh, just like uh, a very simple demo, if this was just showing I was trying to show off Terraform, it would be a really boring demo. And then I have one that's actually using Terraform Cloud uh, as a backend. Uh, so we'll have that kind of uh, uh, setup going where where the 
the stuff is happening in Terraform Cloud, but it's initiated through, uh, you know, through Kubernetes and, and through the Terraform controller. So if you don't know, uh, by the way, this is like uh, one of the things that's, uh, that makes these kind of things really hard to do really quickly. Uh, but everything in Terraform is a module. The place where you're running Terraform, the binary, uh, that is what you call a root module. So uh, everything that lives inside of that folder is what's going on uh, as in, inside of the root module. And then if you have uh, code that you want to bring in, you can import that as a, a child module. So in this case, we're looking at some root modules. These root modules can be reused. So, you know, one code that can be reused several times to do different things depending on. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just jump into it. So I have this <coughs> really easy <laughs> main.tf file, which, you know, it's called greetings. So I guess people can understand what's going on, gonna, gonna happen here. I have two variables and one output. So it, this is as simple as it gets, really. It's, it's basically just like a hello world, but I, hello git updates, I thought, you know, work better. Um, and so you define these variables. Uh, you can set them if you want in the, in the, in the uh, what we're gonna look at afterwards. And it will output this message, which basically is just a greeting plus the subject and an exclamation mark because we're happy people. Um, I've set this up. Uh, well, I have commented it out. So um, currently, if I've, again, jump to my, I have a really complicated Windows here. So just to explain what's going on here, I have two instances of uh, K9s or K, K9s or whatever you want, however, <laughs> K9. Uh, into these, I think so. Uh, I can also, you know, this one on the bottom is doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, so on top, I have my Terraforms, uh, which is all the Terraform resources, uh, you know, the CRD that the, the Terraform controller installs. And I already have this uh, one for Terraform Cloud set up just simply because I've been battling back and forth with this so much that I just I just want to, you know, just have, hope it works. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to try now to add the, what we saw, the greeter. What the greeter is going to do, if we then jump back into the... Not that one. There we go. Uh, if we uncomment this, what this is going to do is going to set up the Terraform resource. Uh, it is going to be called greet git upstays because I'm imaginative. Um, it's set on the interval of one minute, auto approve. And then um, this is set up against the, uh, if you see down here, the source rep was, is, uh, uh, it says that we're going to use the git repository from, uh, called flux system in the flux system namespace again I'm, I'm really good at naming things uh so so we are reusing these uh, uh like the get repository uh, reference that are is already from flux uh so you kind of see how this all ties together uses the same type of system uh and here are reference to the uh, terraform and greetings folder and then i'm setting these variables these variables are set are currently static here in, in in the spec but you can also set it to uh, uh, be populated from i think both the config map and the secret so if you have these uh you know certain things like a password or something you can store that as a secret and then import that into uh, into as um, as terraform variables uh, and in this case also i'm going to write the output to secret so we can see the message and let's uh, hope that i can uh, <laughs> Again, let's just let's just hope this works because for some reason, again, I'm just going to complain about my machine being weird. <laughs> so uh, we're demit, uh, committing, adding and committing this file, and it's like this, you know, get commit messages is the you know most important part of the job. So just you know, demo, uh, and then we get push it. If I then jump back to my terminal. And I, I do, I don't know, a cheeky reconcile of the, the, uh, the get uh, and this get source and also the customize just because we can see that now we have our Terraforms updated with a uh, greet get updates and nothing is happening here at the moment. What will hopefully happen in not that long is here when we see the pods, we, we see that we have our TF controller pod. Uh, the way that 
this gets handled is that for every one of these, uh, as you can see now, the Azure VM one is running. It, it runs a pod that actually is running Terraform and does all that work for you. Um, and uh, so this one kicked off and you can see now it's this was ready, but now it's in doing its Terraform init and everything like that. And now it's doing planning. Hopefully, uh, I can also try to do the TF, uh, TFCTL reconcile. Again, uh, something something weird has been happening all day. So, so let, let, if this doesn't work, we can just look at the other one. Um, but what should be happening right now is that there's going to be a new pod spinning up and doing every uh, Terraform thing, and then the output will then get you know uh, placed in the secret that we defined. Instead of sitting here and just staring at this and hoping that everything works. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on inside of this um, Azure uh, ASAT VMTF runner. Uh, as we can see here, this is a Terraform plan. Uh, so what it did is literally just it's, uh, ran, uh, the, the continuously trying to, to, to make sure that everything is up and running. Uh, we can see up here that it says that the plan uh, status is plan, uh, no changes happened and a reference to uh, to to a hash for uh, for a commit um, and uh, this is if you do if you use the terraform this is basically terraform right um, and as we can see here since this is run through terraform cloud you can you can view this run in in the browser so let's try and do that just you know because why not uh, and open the right window in the right container and here we can see the run that, that happened. And this is what's called a speculative run, which basically is just something you run to make sure that everything is up to date. Uh, you can't apply through this. This is just a run that can be triggered by numerous of uh, things. If this came up with a change, uh, then the Terraform controller would automatically do a apply run, which then would trigger a uh, second run. So while we're waiting for the other one to work for again for some reason this kind of i'm just pushing all the buttons uh i'm gonna update the terraform that uh the uh, the other one is uh using so if we go in here first of all uh, what's good about this is it's basically just terraform at this point if i ran terraform here it will do the same well obviously i would need to you know put in some some of the same input variables but it will basically just run the same um, same code in the same fashion as it does in, with the tf controller so if i look into uh, some details here we can see that i'm i'm setting up a cloud backend with my organization with my workspace um, and uh, basically what it does in this case is creating a resource group, is creating a virtual network, is creating a subnet, and it's creating a VM through the Crayon uh, virtual machine module, uh, which has a lot of weird stuff in it, and uh, and it and even you know sets the the VM password. And as we can see, if we look in in this one, we can see that we have first of all uh, some configs, uh, CLI configs for the Terraform cloud, you know, to have that get out of running. We're setting some variables directly in our manifest, and then we have some variables that comes from a secret where the obviously the secret password lies. Um, and if we now, you know, change something, let's uh, let's add another tag and say hello again. It's it's one of those days. Get up, base. Cool. That's, that's a great get the add terraform vm and it's main right yep get commit again demo for the second time and we'll push this up uh, and now we can see that the greets github stays actually run also so um like previously mentioned there's um um, you can you can have this to be auto approved, which I'm currently doing right now. Again, just because things have taken a little bit of time uh, with the setup that I have right now. Uh, but what you could do is if you if you ran this and you set it to you need to approve it. Uh, if I now now I can zoom in on this one, 
so you can see if I did a TFCTL uh, plan show uh, oh sorry let's uh, plan uh, and I think don't think this actually works if I don't have the plan yeah there's no plan pending so what I could what could happen is it could do a Terraform plan and then that change will then get written into a secret Kubernetes secret and then you could through this process uh, get the secret down to your machine and it's basically just using Terraform to show that uh, plan and in in that sense it will look exactly how you would expect it to do and you can then do a, a TFCTL plan approve and then you know you would have that kind of process um, but currently I'm just letting letting it rip to do whatever it wants uh, I'm probably not going to screw anything up I, it, I screwed up enough today so yeah, just let it do its thing uh, if we now look at the AC VMTF runner um, all right well it actually hadn't gotten the change um, oh, that's the wrong one Just wait for it. Wait for it. Um, so, what it sh what should happen uh, now? It's terminating the the pod and it's gonna you know run a new one. What should be happening now is there's gonna be, there's a difference and it's not a difference from like the ACVM Terraform resources perspective, but it's actually a change in Terraform. Uh, so what it does now is it's gonna run it again, see that there's a change, there's a new tag that's gonna be added, and then that will since I have auto approve on, it will then run a Terraform cloud, you know. Uh, plan or, or or a Terraform a cloud run, uh, which is gonna show the change and then auto approve in this case. So let's see if this. Uh, let's see if it works. I don't have high hopes. I don't know why. I think I'm pessimistic today. <laughs> but. Uh, but if not, then it would do on the next one and we can <laughs> you know, take some questions or something like that. It's also like super late for you there, isn't it? So <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's half past 10 at the moment. <laughs> and it's, it's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's just say that. Uh, oh, oh, there you go. Three changes because uh, since this is a tag that's set on a module, there's different resources inside the module that that would happen. Uh, if I now... So, so this is a speculative plan, right? Like I said, what would actually happen now is that if I go into my Firefox and go into a run, uh, it should, yeah, preparing the remote apply. So now, here we go. Now Terraform Cloud is doing its thing and everything's joyful and demo gods are nice today. <laughs> Um, and then it would do what you expect it to do. It's, it's kind of one of those things where it, it actually does what it's, you expect it to do, yeah. which is great. Um, and like I said, like like just a teaser, tomorrow I'm going to talk more about what the plans are for from us, at least, how we're going to use this, uh, which can be interesting. I don't want to say anything because then I'm going to spoil it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep it a surprise, but definitely come yep. back and watch it. <laughs> Um, yeah, and plan is finished and apply queued and everything like that. So this is basically straightforward as, as is. This is exactly the same, like it says, it even says trigger via CLI because what is actually happening is that you have the controller doing, you know, Terraform on your, on your code. Right. Um, one thing that's, that's, uh, perhaps is, uh, worth mentioning is that right now this is using Terraform cloud which means that the state is stored in Terraform Cloud. If you, uh, again, since this is basically just um, using the, the Terraform, so you know you, we only have automation on the Terraform parts. So everything Terraform is still relevant. So if you want to set your backup to be a, a, a blob in a storage account in Azure or in S3 or you know whatever you use to have that shared state, uh, or even just using Terraform Cloud just for state management, if you want to do that. 
um, you know, you can do all of that. But if you don't want to do that and you have uh, your um, just wanted to run through uh, Kubernetes, that's what we've been doing with the this other one. And if I look at secrets, uh, I have the output, but I also have, as you can see here, t uh, TF plans. Mm -hmm. So I have these. Uh, I have these state files then stored in Kubernetes as secrets. Um, you know, do you want to do that? You pr in some cases you might. Uh, I would prefer having it somewhere specific, like because it doesn't cost a lot to have a S3 or a storage account. Just having this, you know, right. so that makes it more lenient when it comes mm -hmm. to like how you manage your Kubernetes cluster and stuff like that. You know, keeping it, like literally keeping a stateless. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, sorry, what was that? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, just when I talk, I, I heard someone on my ear saying something, and it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> secret messages. Yes. So basically, uh, it would work as you expect, except that when you do this locally on your machine, you have your state file on your machine, and you can't really work with anyone. Like this is uh, this is the reason why you do automation through through pipelines usually. But in this case, you can just skip pipelines entirely and just go straight right. for the you know actual GitOps experience, and have all the same uh, um, you know. That all, all everything that you used to with Flux, but now also with Terraform. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any questions or anything like that? I don't see any yet, but we'll we'll keep uh, an eye out on the channel. If any come up in there, we'll yeah. we'll answer them. But uh, yeah, there's not any right now. Yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of a delay with YouTube, so uh, we'll yeah. Right. there. Yeah. So. Well, um, yep. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for this, and we look forward to the talk tomorrow uh, on the similar theme. Again, this very popular area of Terraform and Flux. Next, we will be able to have um, HashiCorp Vault and Flux. So great, interesting work that Pinky was doing um, a couple months ago with Rosemary. So, um, Robert, thank you so much, and we will now switch gears to Rosemary.